Well, time to head off on day eight, uh, 892 kilometres to get to Albany now. Uh, directly over my shoulder here is Mount Cook. Um, it's a pretty steep climb and we go into it almost immediately because we're two and a half kilometres away from the summit. We've got about four or five hundred metres to go before we get to a, a bridge that crosses the river. And then from there, it's pretty much uphill to the top of Mount Cook, the highest point that we'll actually be uh, travelling all the way to Albany. So time to uh, head off from the campsite here. Next stop, the top of the mountain. quite do the justice to the climb. We've just got a little tiny flat spot here and as I speak it starts to arc up a little bit. And in some ways it's nice that this particular climb is right at the start of the day when I guess legs are as fresh as they can possibly be after a pretty good night's sleep. Well, not quite at the top of Mount Cook, about three quarters of the way up, but every occasion we've scaled it in the past, we come and have a sit down right here. This is a magnificent view back over the trees, the forests, Mount Cuthbert and Mount Vincent in the distance. And down in that valley is where we have come from, where we camped overnight. We're just taking in a little bit of breeze with the backpacks off and then We'll be on our way once again. Well, we've reached the summit and Jude's going to add to the can. Well done, Judith. This time you did better. Last time, remember, you put it up there and it fell down. Well done. Well, I threw it last time. <laughs> so here we are, 582 metres above sea level. This is the highest place in the Darling Escarpment. So we've climbed Cuthbert, Vincent and now Cook. And for the rest of the day, it's going to be pretty plain sailing. It's a, a nice way to start the day, and a beautiful day it is too. So we've come down off Mount Cook now, so all the climbing for the day well and truly behind us. Just uh, fairly flat and rolling now through to Narang, although unfortunately we have uh, a burn off diversion, which we think is going to take us along Albany Highway, which will be fun, loaded with traffic, including road trains. So we'll have to wait and see whether that is the case, but it appears from what we can glean. That's what lays ahead of us at some stage, which will be a 
fairly monotonous few kilometres, but you have to put up with these things, I guess, when you're walking as far as we are. There are going to be a few little inconveniences, which you've just got to try and smile about. Here is the information to the back burn, telling us that we are here. There's our normal campsite there, and that's the track going through. But we're actually gonna go down this way, along Albany Highway, a little bit past the normal campsite, into that area there. Having said that, it does look like they have already undertaken the burn, but what normally happens is that they want to maintain integrity of everything and make sure that trees are all secure along the edge of the track or any access roads through there so they keep it closed for a while, have a few inspections. But for us, unfortunately, it means we have to continue up this gravel track until we get to the highway and then swing a left and skirt the whole area. detergent handy? Ah uh, no. Oh shame oh. because we've got a washing machine just here would have been absolutely perfect Judith. We could have actually got our clothes washed before we got to dwelling up. The things you see. Well we've just come down that road off Albany Highway. And do you realise, Jude, that if we had stayed there and thumbed a lift in three and a half hours, we'd be where we're going to be in 51 days? <laughs> no, <laughs> we would have no, actually been in Albany. No, 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 no. But because no. of the zigzag, <laughs> the zigzag nature of this track and the fact that we're walking and they're doing 110 kilometres an hour, it is going to be another seven and a bit weeks. Unfortunately, that's the end of the day down there. We've still got to be another four and a half, five k's on just uh, Forest Road, which is understandable. Across the road, you can see where very recently, the last day or two, they have actually done the back burn down here. So on this side of the road, still doesn't look in pristine condition, but probably been burned a few years ago. But yes, very shortly after a bit of a break down that road, to a temporary camp. Well, we finally made it to the temporary camp, which isn't overly flash, but it's where we're going to be staying tonight. They've got a port loo They've got some big drums of water we've already checked. And that one's about a third full. The one on the left is about a quarter full. And the one on the right weighs about 20 kilograms because it's completely full. So the port loo here and some very temporary sites. But it has been a long day today walking on hard roadside or along gravel. So I think this might be our last bit of video for the day. We're going to set up our tents here have some dinner and I think we're going to be in them very early. The start of day nine, we've got about 16 and a half kilometres to go down to Gringer. Uh, I have to say, I know that Depor has to have backburns and you fully understand that, but this really is not a, a great uh, facility that they've put in as a temporary camp. Um, there are no logs to sit on, uh, nothing at all. Unfortunately, the area that they've chosen is actually it would appear where kangaroos have uh, laid down because yesterday afternoon, uh, as soon as we sat down, uh, we had about four or five ticks, or I had four or five kangaroo ticks come onto me in the space of about two or three minutes. But there's absolutely nowhere here to actually sit. As I said, I, I know that the backburns need to be done. I think everyone understands that for the good of, of the future of the forest and also for safety. But they need to actually find a better area. Um, perhaps the people that are doing it aren't hikers and aren't mindful. The other thing is, yesterday afternoon, not long after I removed my pack, my back was sore uh, from about mid-afternoon onwards, but I had incredible spasms and I could hardly move. And I honestly thought 
getting into bed last night that maybe this would be the termination of my walk. The pain was absolutely incredible. Uh, thankfully Jude had some painkillers, I've taken them. And whilst the back is a long way from being 100%, it's certainly able to, to keep going. But yeah, last night I really had grave fears that um, this could be it for my bid to get all the way to Albany. Luckily today is very flat, hardly any rise in it whatsoever. So we're on our way and fingers crossed the, the back will hold up and get another decent night's sleep tonight. Lovely morning. Give me five. <laughs> Today is quite a therapeutic day, just walking through the Wandu forest. Beautiful dappled light. Time is still only about quarter past nine in the morning. And after the arduous walking yesterday, which wasn't very pleasant along the hard exposed gravel roads or forest tracks and then over three k's along the edge of Albany Highway. Your feet got very hot and your legs got a little bit weary. But today, it's just very, very gentle undulations down towards Gringer and it really feels beautiful. Sort of part of the track where you can just switch off a little bit if you like and you just sort of roll along, taking the aspects of the forest on both sides. And it really is somewhat of a, a chill out day if you like. A day where you can pretty much just put your body in neutral and purely just enjoy what is an amble, if you like, through the Wandu forest. It's a very nice feeling. That doesn't really look like a river. It doesn't even look like a dry river bed, but it is. It's part of the Serpentine River, which runs down to Serpentine Dam, which actually provides quite a bit of the water supply for the city of Perth. But as you can see at the moment, there is nothing in there. It is absolutely bone dry. Hello, little fella. How are you? Hey, I nearly trod on you. You're very well camouflaged here on the track, aren't you? Hmm? I'll have to step around you then, eh? And here we are. 16 and a half kilometres. And we have arrived at Gringer Creek. Yippee. Last night, as we mentioned earlier today, unfortunately, Jude, uh, the temporary camp for Narang wasn't very good because there wasn't even anywhere to sit. There were no logs. But you have the solution with your little tech talk today. Yes, so Jude's tech talk too. Um, a lot of people talk about ultralight. I'm not ultralight in any way, shape or form because I like to carry my Helinox Zero. The Helinox Zero weighs 520 grams. You can get the Helinox ground. It weighs a little bit more, um, but it, has, it doesn't sink into the ground. This to me is a lifesaver. I cannot survive without it because I get a bad back, I'm old, at the end of the day, I want to be able to sit down. And in here, I can sit down and I'm comfortable. And for me, well worth the 520 grams. Like I say, everyone walks their own walk. 
but this is a game changer. The other thing is a game changer is this little piece. This is a sit mat. And when you're young, this is what you take as a chair and you sit on one of these. But I bring this too because I need it to kneel in and out of my tent. If not, I can't get in and out of my tent, but also I use it as a shower mat. So when I'm having a shower out in the bush, which I do regularly, I will use this. So my two little extra things, I think this weighs about, I don't know, 30, 30 grams, something like that. But game changers in my world. It is a lovely view from the hut. A little bit of a short walk though to come up to the, the toilet. And as you can see, it's just a, a standard uh, drop toilet. Although this one's a little bit different because it is actually a toilet with a view. So if you actually happen to be sitting Oh. <laughs> oh, the serenity. <laughs> but I should just pan down. No, she's not really going to the toilet. But one thing that is in all the toilets is this. So when you are sitting there doing what you need to do, uh, there's one of these signs, are you bushfire ready? So it actually tells you how to make a plan if you happen to be here, to act without delay. It tells you where you should try and go if you can't actually escape from the entire area and also what shelter you should try and take. But anyway, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it now, Judith, and <laughs> you can take care of whatever it is you need to take care of. Time to pack all our gear and uh, head off to Whitehorse Hills, which is going to be quite a, an arduous day today. We've been told there are two significant climbs. The last one actually goes into the campsite. Jude's getting all ready. She just put on her Bibbleman track, what do you call it, a buff. Buff. And just as you were getting your <laughs> Bibbleman track buff out, this little critter, not so small, Huntsman Spider just jumped out. So you got to remember always that we are in the Australian bush. Maybe shake things before you put them on. I did, that's how I found it. Oh, that was clever. Yeah. That's, um, that's, an, that's better. That's a, that's a very elegant look. Can I make it move now? You can make it move now if you like. Beautiful sunny day, blue sky. Going to be reasonably warm, which may well test us a little bit later when we get to the two steepish climbs. Well, I don't know if they're actually steep, but they are long. So there might be a few stops to get our breath and just give the legs a bit of a relaxation on the way up. It's a beautiful day for hiking. Two point four kilometers out of camp and we've reached Albany Highway. We just have to do a, a right turn, and unlike the other day, we're only walking about 150, 200 metres down the highway before we have to cross over. A little bit more pleasant. If you're doing some roadworks down ahead, you can see that they've got some uh, cones out. Not too far down, we cross the road, continue back onto the track. Half hour climbing out of the way for the day. We've been over Boonering Hill. We're now heading down into the valley before we stop for lunch and then attack the last hill of the day. We've just reached the bottom of Kimberling Hill. We've got just under three kilometres to the campsite and about 2.7 of that probably is climbing this hill. It just tails off at the peak and the run home to our hut for tonight. But we'll be taking it pretty slowly. There is thankfully a bit of cloud cover that's just come in. Doesn't help with the humidity but does help with the direct sunlight. Welcome folks to Whitehorse Hills, home 
for the knot. Final bit of packing ahead of a 16k day or thereabouts to Mount Wells. How are we feeling, Judith? Sleep well? I'm very good. I've had a little mice visit me. How do you know? Um, because there's mice poo next to me. <laughs> About 30 centimetres from your head when you wake up. Yeah, so the little mice obviously didn't wake me up. It was very quiet. <laughs> Not so cold this morning. No, no, it's good. It's very pleasant. Today we've got a little bit of a hill, not long out of uh, Whitehorse Hills here. And then uh, pretty much rolling landscape until we get to about a kilometre and a bit from Mount Wells. And it's reasonably steepish but not overly arduous. But as you can see, beyond the hut this morning, it is a beautiful morning. Once again, a blue sky. And once again, uh, the trees are pretty much dead calm. We've been incredibly lucky with the weather so far. Um, otherwise, it would be very, very cold in the morning. Anne and Annabelle are packing up over there in the distance. We had a lovely evening with them last night. Uh, Anne is an incredible inspiration. She's in her mid-70s and she was talking about her expeditions twice to the Himalayas. Um, all over the world she's walked, but they're 75 years of age. She had a bit of a tumble yesterday, but she's a pretty strong spirit. And Annabelle a bit younger and she's keeping her company. So uh, we'll be seeing them the next two nights before they head off the track just before dwelling up. So it's nice to have not just company, but most importantly when you're out in the bush, good company. Well, that is staggering, how that rock, obviously totally separate to what's underneath it, and it's big, it's probably about three metres tall, is just sitting there, and then here, it's like someone has got a massive saw and cut a cleft straight through the middle of this granite rock. A reminder again of just how astonishing nature can be. into the day we've got another die back cleaning station here so we're taking a, an opportunity to sit on the bench uh, that would have to be one of the best two hours I reckon we've spent so far Jude that the, the wildflowers the granite at the top the views absolutely spectacular I totally agree it was a nice gentle walk up to like a point and you felt like well I thought when I get to the end there's gonna be a sheer drop but there wasn't <laughs> but that's what it felt like but it was just beautiful uh, stunning wildflowers. We actually read that in the Billman Foundation uh, hand guide that this particular part of the, the track coming from Whitehorse Hills towards Mount Wells is somewhat of a, a hot spot for wildflowers, but they're absolutely staggering. There's just so many out there in so many different colours. You even found some of your favourite orchids out there. Yeah, so um, I found the purple one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> technical term for it, the purple one. What's the one you really love, the enamel? Yeah, that's what I saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. No purple enamel orchids today, but I did see a spider orchid. Uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic day. We're about halfway down the decline coming off that hill where we saw the nama, the beautiful little bit of water at the top of the granite. So we're going to finish our coffee and then continue on our merry way.
just over a, a kilometre to go now to the top of Mount Wells and this is where it starts to go up a little bit steeper. Thankfully it's only a, a short sharp burst but it is a, a little bit taxing on the legs as we get a little bit closer to the top. And the weather is just starting to heat up, there's still some shade here in the forest but there are long patches in pretty bright sunshine as well so I don't think I'll be taking it in any great hurry to get to the top. So here we are at Mount Wells. As I mentioned a little bit earlier today it's the only, well I was going to say hut, it's the only campsite on the entire Bibbulmun that doesn't have a three-sided hut. It has, well, is really a, an old house. House is probably a fairly loose term. It is where the fire watchers used to stay. There is the fire tower, Jude's up there waving. Uh, the top of it got blown off. Hello Judith, about 15 years ago I think, but uh, it's still there. Before I join Jude, we'll have a brief look inside the hut. There's a single room behind that door. In here we've got a little eating area. Might be where we have dinner. There's the old fire watcher's oven. I'm sure he enjoyed that. And then around through here is where Jude and I will be staying. We've, we've got here first, so this is our room. We lay our sleeping bags out in there. Hello Judith. High enough for me. What did you make of the last kilometre of the walk? Uphill. Had a gradient. Extremely uphill. Gradient of around 10 percent. Yeah, so slowly, that was, slowly. That was wonderful fun. Except for I was I had my eyes down and bum up oh, yes. to get up the hill and um, I had a reasonably close encounter with a do guy. When I say reasonably, I wasn't that close, but um, enough to make me go, whoa, just sunning itself on the pathway. Um, it was probably a metre long, or as over we like, a metre long. Or as we like to call it, a do guy. What did you call it? A do guy. Yeah, do guy, do guy. We'll go with do guy. So anyway, this is not quite the top of the tower. Thankfully. Yes, but you can see there's a Telstra tower just there. But you can get a bit of an impression of what the fire wardens who can't go any higher than here at the moment because the top is blown off for safety reasons you can't go up. But it gives you an idea of the, the view that they had watching the sunset on another great day on the Bibbulmun track. This is the top of the Mount Wells Forest Fire Lookout Tower and a beautiful sunset glowing out towards the west. Terrific days walking, the last bit, yep, a little bit tough, but you've got to expect that on a 1,000 kilometre journey. So here's to another great day tomorrow and another good night's sleep tucked up in the sleeping bag.